Another key thing to do whenever you are working in Photoshop is to know what you have before you start trying to change what you have. And so if you are going to create a new document from scratch, you get to choose what those settings are. But a lot of the times we find an image that we like and we want to use that image for a project. Um, so before you even start doing any editing, you should start to look at what you have, what exists already before you decide to change it. And one of those things that you should look at is color mode because color mode affects a lot of things. And so color mode affects the way that your image is interpreted. It affects what Photoshop features are available. It also affects what your image is going to look like when it's output. So I don't want to say printed because that's only one form of, of outputting your file. You can export it to different file formats and display it on different devices. But the color mode is going to have a huge impact on that. And so one of the things that's talked about in chapter one is the idea of the channels panel. And so if you were to open the channels panel, so I'm undocking it, I'm just going to click it and drag it, you will see what colors your image is made out of on the channels panel. And so if I zoom in on that, again, I have no idea if you're seeing this zoom in or not on the recorded video. Um, if I zoom in on that, you can see that it's an RGB image and it's made up of red, green, and blue. And if you turn the little eyeball off, you can, whoops, make sure you actually turn them off, you can see the density of the color that is being used. And so right now it appears that my image is black and white, but if I look at the channels panel, what I'm seeing is I'm seeing just where blue is used in my red, green, and blue image. And why it's black and white is not because it's supposed to be black and white, it's supposed to be blue. But what it's representing is the density of the color. And so if I look at what's on screen right now, let me make my little brush smaller, it's kind of annoying me. Um, if I look at the screen right now, whatever is dark, has a lot of blue in it and whatever is light does not have a lot of blue in it and so you can see that the the houseboat here on the right hand side is very dark the petal right here is very dark and so it is more um, saturated with the blue color and if I switch that to green you can see where there's a lot of green in the image and you can see where there's a lot of red and now it's not as intuitive as cyan, magenta, yellow, and black for printing because those are subtractive colors these are additive colors um, but it still applies. It's showing you how much of red is needed in a red, green, and blue image to produce the color that you're producing. And then you can get kind of a trippy look if you want to see what red and green combined would give you, and then what blue, green, and red would give you, etc. So that's kind of the hard way to look at the color of the image. There's an easier way. If you look at the little tab in the top left hand corner of your frame window here, and it says that the image that I have open right now is Art1280 image number 5.jpg at 125% RGB slash 8. Right there it tells me what the color mode of the project is. It's a red, green, and blue 8-bit image and I'm viewing it at 125%. And while we're here, anytime you see a little asterisk next to the name of the file, it means that there is a change that hasn't been saved. And so if I did Command S, Control S on your keyboard, um, while save, it will save those changes. Okay. There we go. Okay. Um, last but not least, the way that is, I think, the most efficient way to look and make changes to your document's color mode is under the image menu, you can go to image and mode, and then you can choose a color mode for your project. And what I would say is whatever the color mode is, leave it unless there's a specific reason that you're changing it. And in most cases, it will be an RGB image because you've either gotten it from the internet and images displayed on the internet are displayed are display images and they are already in RGB color mode or you captured it on a digital camera, which captures images with light, which means they capture it in RGB color mode. Um, only if there's a reason, then you switch. Um, there's also a benefit that all Photoshop features are available to you in RGB, whereas if you change, let's go to multi-channel here, right? If you change the color mode, and then you try to use different things, different tools or different features of Photoshop. Some might be grayed out, like you can see here on the image menu, there's some that are grayed out. When you change color mode, you might see a prompt. So I'm going to change from RGB to CMYK. And this prompt is telling me basically, without reading the words, it's saying, you're going to destroy the color you have and you're going to change it to be new color. And you won't be able to go back to that original color because that original color doesn't exist anymore. If you're doing it for a purposeful reason, then you say, yes, I do want to accept that. I want to convert it to CMY CMYK because I'm going to print. And I know that CMYK can't, produce, um, 
CMYK cannot produce really bright colors that I might be seeing on my screen, and so it would be best for me to change it to CMYK so that I see an accurate representation or a more accurate representation of what I might see when printing. Switching color modes is pretty straightforward. There are some color modes that require a two or three step process. And so like right now I have CMYK color mode selected. I can't choose index, duotone, or bitmap. That's because it requires a multi-step process. And so in order to create any of those file, um, those color modes, I first must choose grayscale, which will say, are you sure you want to throw out all that color? And watch the channels panel when I do this. It's going to disappear from CMYK to just one channel of color. And then now that I've eliminated all the colors and I have grayscale, now I can choose bitmap, duotone, or indexed. And duotone actually is a three-step process because once you make it a duotone, you have to choose your duotone settings. And so by default, it might look something like this. And you might say, well, that just looks like a grayscale image. And you would be correct because a grayscale image only has black and white. And so if you create a duotone out of black and white, you're really just creating a grayscale image. And so you need to choose your color. And so instead of a monotone, which is what a grayscale would be, you'd have to choose duotone. You can even choose a tritone or a quadtone if you want to have multiple colors. And then above and beyond that, you actually have to choose a color. And so you have to decide, do you want to have a red and black image? Do you want to have a blue and black image? And you don't even have to have blue and black. You could have black, uh, blue, and red. You could have blue and yellow. And then the only colors being used in this image are blue and yellow or blue and green or whatever colors you happen to select. Okay. Okay, that's my introduction to color modes and changing color modes. Um, if you have any questions, post it in the discussion thread and we can make sure that we get those answered.